Well, we are back, and uh, and we're going to be joined by our first guest of the evening. He is the FFC middleweight, Mike Cowboy Wilcox. Mike's uh, slate to return to action here. You know, you know, been a little bit, a uh, little bit of time away from the cage, but he's getting back in there. Uh, May twentieth, FFC sixty five, and uh, looking back to getting to his uh, winning ways against uh, Christian Torres. How are we feeling tonight, Mike? Yeah. Hey guys, what's going on? I uh, what's up? I'm excited to be back. You know, I took like two years off, and um, you know, I just um, uh, I'm just ready to go out there and perform. You know, so it's like a little goal of mine to go out there and just perform like I know how. You know, so I'm excited. Now, now your time away wasn't necessarily injuries either. You know, you've also uh, you also are, are coaching uh, wrestling now on top of you know everything else that that life has to offer. How, how did that uh position come about? Um, well, I, I used to wrestle at the one college that I'm coaching at right now. So their head coach um, uh, resigned, and they called me and asked me if I was, you know, available or, you know, was interested in taking the job. And kind of was uh, – I had a little free time as far as, you know, you know availability of if, if I could do it or not. It was kind of – you know, I didn't, I didn't want to commit to something I couldn't do, you know. But I said, you know, um, the hours seem to be working, you know, in my favor to take the head coaching job. So – I took it, and, um, you know, it's been good, you know. It's been real good. And I uh, yeah, I got offered a few fights during wrestling season, but I didn't want to – you know, all my other fights, I kind of – I overload myself, you know. I tried doing everything, you know, too much. So, it's, you know, you always kind of spread yourself thin in all areas, right? So, I told mm-hmm. them, look, after wrestling season's done, when wrestling season's done in March, I said, uh, I'm going to fight. So, they said, how about May 11th – or, I'm sorry, May 20th in Philadelphia? And I said, yeah, it's perfect. Let's do it. Uh, I, I can't say I'm not happy to see you back. I mean, it's uh, it's one of those things. It's uh, you know, that division is is always uh, always uh, always interesting. You know, we see what's going on in the UFC with that middleweight division, and uh, always love watching the, watching the middleweights go, go in there. And uh, you're getting back to it. Yeah, not not that far away. Obviously, you know, uh, the the, the arena is always a uh, a fun place to throw down at. Yeah, you know, I, I've always thought. Well, my first fight ever was in Philly, and I think that was one of my best fights as far as, you know, uh, my personal favorite, you know. Um, I went out there, didn't really know much. I was training for, like, three weeks. My buddy wanted me to fight on an amateur card with him and ended up fighting a really tough kid and, you know, and winning. But just the way I performed out there was my best fight, I think, you know. So I just like the atmosphere in Philly. It's kind of like a raw, rugged, street fight type setting, you know. And the Gregata, yeah, that's, you know, why, that's why you gotta love the arena. It's got that 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 yeah. uh, you know that 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 old school boxing feel. That you know, yeah, you know, like, like, like a, you know, a, the down, the, down know, at the palestra type thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So I feel like I do better in that kind of setting. You know, I don't know. I, I uh, not that I'm not. Yeah, I'm used to performing under the big lights now. But I, I just let, I just want to go out, go out there and fight. You know. So. Um, uh, that's why I said, you know, when they said it was coming, to, the fight was going to be in Philly. Um, I, I was more excited for that than, than the Brigada. I needed a little change of scenery, you know. Hey man, ain't nothing wrong with the Brigada. Brigada's fun, you know. No, it's you know, beautiful. Everyone, everyone likes a good fight in Atlantic City, but you know, I mean, when you're nice in your backyard, it's too. close to home. Everything's easier, you know. You don't you don't have to go to the hotel room or anything. You can sleep sleep in your house. Like people don't understand yeah. that what that means to a fighter. You know, you know, we, we yeah. watch the UFC and watch all these all these fighters fight all over the world, and they got to, you know, manage the fight on top of get, getting your team there. Like, it, it, there's just so much stuff that comes into that. People don't understand the luxuries of being able to do that. Yeah, yeah I mean, I literally live like 12 minutes away from the arena, so I mean, you know, I'll be able to have my breakfast, my lunch at my house that day. Um, be able to go to my my gym, you know, Hanzo Gracie Philly, get a little workout in the afternoon, stay loose. Uh, the Brigada, you know, I mean, it's like I said, it's a beautiful establishment, and everyone who uh, goes there has a great time afterwards. You know, the nightlife, it's awesome, you know. But um, for the fighter, you know, you're, you're eating food, you're on, you, know, you know, people, a lot of these fighters are eating perfect for eight weeks with their little diet, whatever they, you know, do. So if you have to eat at a restaurant, you know, maybe it's cooked in a certain oil you're not used to. So, you know, you always run that risk. But, yeah, being able to fight in Philadelphia is, uh, is a big advantage. Now, um you know, we've we've had some some uh, some some rough news here in the uh, in the in the local scene, man. You know, uh, 
you know, everyone knows, you know, you know, you know, Big Black was a big UFC fan. He passed away this week. And we, we, we've been hit really hard in, in, in our local community. You know, uh, you know, Paul, Paul lost his pop uh, uh, this week. We, you know, the unfortunate situation, what happened with, uh, with Nick Catone's uh, 20-month-year-old son passing away. It's, uh, is, is, uh, is, is that kind of motivation to kind of, kind of get, get a win out there, to, to kind of uh, ease, ease the pain of, uh, of the local, local MMA community right now? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a terrible thing, and, it, and it's crazy how, uh, like you said, you know, Paul's, Paul's father and Nick's son, you know, it was the same day, you know, and um, it's just a, it's a horrible thing, you know, and, you know, I mean, you know, Paul's dad, I'm sure, is extremely proud for everything he's accomplished so far. I mean, you know, Paul's an inspiration for anyone, you know, the kid, you know, was an actor, you know what I mean, never had a background like me or was a wrestler or a box, you know what I mean, Paul, uh, yeah. went to college for acting and just, you know, he's just a, you know, Paul's, you know, the epitome of a fighter. You know, he just has balls and heart, and that's really, you know, you know what I mean. So, um, Paul, Paul came straight out of Fight Club. My, yeah, you know, that's, that's <laughs> Paul. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, like I said, I'm sure his dad is, you know, proud of him and, and shit. And like you said, with everything that happened with Nick, Frankie Edgar was, you know, talking about it last night in his post-fight interview. You know, uh-huh. it's, uh, it's, you know, it's a, it's a shame. It really is, and I can't, I can't imagine it's, it's, it's horrible. I, I, I don't even know what I'd be. I, I don't. I don't think I would have seen a post on social media. I'd have shut my accounts down, and you know, you probably wouldn't have seen me or heard from me in months. I, I don't yeah, know, and yeah. I don't know how I would handle that situation. It's rough. Yeah, it's uh, it's just, you know, it's 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 frightening. I'm sure you know. Being a, not until you start getting older do you realize how scary it is to be a parent. You know, when you're young and your parents worry about you, you think, oh, they're just being a pain in the ass. You know, and then you start getting older, and you're like, man, I can't imagine having kids, and 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 just you know, every little thing you have to I'm, worry about. And, and I am scary. terrified for when the time my daughter starts driving when she gets older. <laughs> that's one of yeah, the, exactly. that's one of the things exactly. I'm worried about. I'm like, hey, Dad, can I borrow the car? I'm like, hey, no. Can I drive you? Yeah. Where do you gotta go? What about your far? big? What about your big wheel? What about your big wheel? <laughs> yeah, I mean. Yep. That's, so cow, so yeah. cowboy. You know, uh, you know. Let's uh, change gears a little bit. You talk about when you first started fighting. Uh, you talk about the nerves, and you say you fought for a while now. But uh, are there going to be any nerves after being uh, off, uh, out of the cage, in live action? Um, I mean, I'm going to have. You know, the nerves are going to kick in for anyone, but I don't think the layoff is going to affect me at all. I mean, I still train just about every day with my team. I just wasn't competing, you know, so, but mentally I feel better than I honestly ever have probably in my whole career. I, I've been working a lot on like the mental game, the psychology. I, you know, that's always, I feel like my first two fights ever, I beat probably the best two guys in my career. And it's when I knew the least <laughs> and I was the least experienced, yeah. but I just went out there and fought like, you know, and I felt like the, the more, um, the more experienced I got in the sport and the older I was, you know, more mature I got and, and stuff is like the, is like, I'm not saying the worst I got, but mentally uh, I put too much pressure on myself. The better, you know, the higher up on the ranks I started getting, the more pressure I put on myself. And then my anxiety would kick in, in the back room and it felt like, you know, I could barely breathe and, and, and it was getting dizzy. It was crazy, you know, and I'm like, it's, it's now, crazy how know, we do that because you're, yeah, you're and, uh, a great wrestler. You're a fantastic wrestler. Outstanding beyond belief. So it's like uh, you you got the confidence for days, I'm sure. Yeah, I could so go out it's there. Like, it's like, why the hell am I getting nervous? Exactly. For a wrestling match, I, I, I never got the nerves that I get before a fight. And I know obviously a fight's a lot more intense, but when I stepped out on the wrestling mat, my mindset was, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pin you, tech fall you, I'm kicking your ass, you know? And for the fights, I'm yeah. like, oh, my God, what if this happened? What, what if that happened? And you start telling yourself stories that don't exist. It's, it's actually – I've been studying a lot of the psychology behind it. It's called your paradigm. Assumptions. You yeah. Know, well, it's called, yeah, it's called your paradigm. It's how you channel, you know, thoughts. And, uh, you know, if someone tells you something, it's how you – you know, what happens is you, you start telling yourself stories in your mind of what can happen, what if this happens. And it's nothing – It's always the worst thing. Story. Yeah. It's always you know, the worst. Yeah, and for no reason. So now, you know um, – I've been uh, kind of realizing all that, and just just after reading a little bit about it, it's just like I feel so much more confident to keep myself ready before the fight in the back room, and 
And, you know, like I'm with Sean Brady, I was watching his, he, he had like a little interview or something, and he said, you know, like, listen, me and the guys, you know, we put the gloves on every day, we punch each other in the face, and he's like, I don't, uh, he's like, it's just another day at the, at the office, really. You know, and that's really what it comes down to. And when I go out there to fight, it's got to just be like another day of practice with just a little more intensity. And, and that's really all it is. You know, if you start overthinking, you know, what's going to happen, oh, who's in the, fa- who's in the stands watching, uh, you yeah. know, that's when your body reacts neg- in a negative way, you know. So it's like, I, Mike, Mike, it's, a, it's like it's bad. They, you know, uh, when, I used to, when I was a firefighter, I always talked about tunnel vision. Don't, be, don't get tunnel vision. Well, it's almost like good to have tunnel vision as a fighter. Because then it just blocks everything out, and you're just focused on that one person. Yeah, and uh, a lot of my fights, it felt like I was, I couldn't even see the guy in front of me because I was just so, like, blurred out there. It was horrible, you know, how my body would take over and I would feel. And uh, it sucks because you train so hard, and then you go out there, and you're literally just, like, so disappointed. Even when I would win, I'd be, like, you know, feeling like, man, like, I'm glad I won, but I still didn't you know, fight the way I, I should have fought out there, you know? So this fight to me, it's not about, I mean, obviously, you know, I want to win, but it's not about the winning and losing as much as it is just my performance, you know, like my striking is good. It's like, use it, you know, there's no reason why I should go out there and be forcing a takedown on a guy. There's no reason for that, you know? It's, and, and, like how about this too, uh, cowboy? How about this? It's like, um, you know, all, all your focus was a lot of pressure back in the day. And you always say, you know, if you're not having fun doing something, why the hell are you doing it? And I'm sure you want exactly. to get back in there to have a good time. Yep, exactly. You know, and uh, and that's why I'm and that's why I'm fighting again. You know, it's because I'm really a little sour on how my last fight went, where I, you know, I, I just I fought like shit. That's just the only way to to put it. You know, I didn't fight like the guy I know. You know what I mean? So for me. You know, uh, I, could, I couldn't get that little voice in the back of my head out of it. Like, you know, I got I to gotta redeem myself, you know. I got to get out there and perform, you know. Again, I don't care. I don't give a shit if I get knocked out. I, it's just it's my performance that I care about right now, you know, going out there and just putting my punches, kicks, takedowns together and, and fighting, you know. So that's – and having, like you said, having a little bit of fun. You know, sometimes, again, it's not fun when you're in that back room and you start telling yourself, why the hell am I doing this? I must be crazy. You know, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Then you get out there and you, then you get out there and you win and you're like, shit, I love this, you know. So yeah. it's always, you know, it's always gonna be that way, I guess. So you you're taking on a love love car. Hate relationship with the cage, then, huh? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's. I think every fighter. I mean, and even the great ones, you know, like uh, even Cowboy Cerrone and those guys. You hear them talk about it, and you know, they 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 go through the same they go through the same stuff. You know, it's just how how. Uh, how you handle the voice in your head and, and, and uh, you know, that's all it comes down to, you know, everyone, everyone handles it. Diff. Some people love going out there and they're not nervous at all. You know, look, you look at the fights last night, George Miles off. He's out there smiling when he's walking out there and then you got yeah. other guys who are nervous. Or t- you know, Sam Alvey. Get out there. What's that? Sam Alvey. Sam Alvey. Sam Alvey. Sam Sam yeah. Sam's got the I mean, shit eating grin on his face. <laughs> yeah. Johnson. You know, and, and exactly, and it's guys like that, you know, um, you know, and but sometimes, you know, it's good to be scared, you know, that makes you dangerous, you know, your your reaction, you know, your you punch harder, you're scared, you know, the scared fighter is sometimes more dangerous than a, a relaxed one, but um, yeah, either way, uh, some people are just more comfortable out there fighting than others, I think, and you just got to find the right oh, channel in your emotions, really, you know. Some people fight mm-hmm. better, a little more relaxed. Some people fight better, a little. I fight better when I'm a little pissed off. You know, I feel like if I get hit a little bit, that's when I'm like, okay, whew, I'm in the fight now. Just, just fight. You know, so it's all, uh, it's all the type of fighter you are. <laughs> well, let, hey, real quick, Steve, let me ask you something. So you're fighting Christian Torres, eleven and six. Um, what does he bring to the table that you've noticed? Well, you already told me more about him than I already knew, so. <laughs> I didn't want to know his record. I didn't want to know where he fought. I don't think oh, it doesn't matter. Sorry, oh, it's, all right. it's fine. No, it's fine. I, like I said, man, I really, it doesn't, not that it doesn't matter who they put in front of me, but at the end of the day, it really doesn't to me. Again, it's, it's mm-hmm. about my performance. If I go out there and I perform the way I know how to and the way my teammates know, you know, you know I can do, then I'm going to win that fight. You know, so for me, um, 
my, my, I just got to do my job. My job is to go out there and fight like I know how, and if I do that, I, I'm not really worried about who's in front of me, you know? So Yeah, and, and, um, and you I, learn that through wrestling. I mean, that's something you learn through wrestling. It's like, yeah, uh, I mean, you know, that guy beats me. I did something wrong. It's not he's better than me. I didn't do something right, and I should have done exactly. better in that position to yeah. get the victory. Yep. So, yeah, so, again, you know, it's just about me going out there. That's a great there, way to look at it. Yeah, you know, because – when you start worrying about winning and losing, that's when you put all the pressure on yourself. Like, I've lost now. I've lost a few times. So, you know, I, I, I listen, you know, like, this fight is not about the money for me. It's not about making it to the next level, you know. Like, I, this fight's for me and, and my coach, you know, like Daniel Gracie. Like, he, you know, he, he's the one that got me back in there, really. You know, we, we'd go out and drink some beers together, and he'd be like, man, motherfucker, you need to get back in the cage. I'm telling you. And I'm like, I know, I know. So that's really, you know, the guy who really got me back in the cage. And, um, you know, I know it'll, it'll all be worse than on May 20th. But the guy I'm fighting is good. I, I know he's fought. Some t- I think I watched one of his fights. Um, you know, I think it's a good matchup. You know, he, he seems like he likes to have fun out there. He throws punches, smiles. You know, he, he, he's one of those guys that's going to be a fun fight. So um, um, so when, when, you, when you decided to jump back in the cage, did you go from beer to tequila? <laughs> yeah, right. No, I, um, yeah, I was, I mean, I was a little, he- I wasn't, I wasn't real bad out of shape or heavy, but, um, I definitely cut the beer off around eight weeks out, you know, like everyone else does, I'd say, so, um, yeah. yeah. I was thinking more heavy, of the, I'm I was thinking heavy. more, yeah. cowboy, I was thinking more of the convincing factor, not about the healthy factor. I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> hey, why don't you come back into the octagon? You get drinking a beer, you're like, yeah, whatever. You start drinking tequila, you're like, hell yeah, and put me back in the yeah, octagon. But, Tequila and old fashioned. Uh, that's my drink. Want to get one last question in there before we get ready to wrap everything up with Mike? Obviously, yeah. um, you know, you know, your your, t- your teammate there, M- Mr. Brady, is going to be uh, going after his first title. T- t- tough test, and uh, you know, his opponent uh, uh, Tanner there. What, what do you think? You, you've been in you've been in the room with, with, with Sean. You, we all know what he's what he's capable of. Uh, uh, how do you see that playing out for him? I mean, I'll be honest with you, I I really feel bad for anyone that has to step in there with Sean. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> this other guy too well, you know. But, um, can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we can hear Hello? you. Oh, sorry. No, sorry. I thought I had another call. I had another call coming in. Anyhow, um, I, yeah, I mean, Sean is just one of those guys. He's so well-rounded. It's like, fuck, where, where do you beat him? You know, you really have <laughs> to catch him or something to beat him. I mean, I, I go to him every day. He's just... You know, and he's one of those guys, like, you know, he trains fucking five times a day. He's, he's motivated. He's young. He's hungry. You know, and that's, that's really what it takes to be a champion. I mean, I wouldn't even call be hungry. him hungry because how with, often that kid is in, in, in the room, in, in the gym, he's yeah, starving. I mean, and he loves it. That it's, kid you know, is he just – his, yeah, his self-motivation is just on another level. Yeah, he loves it. He's an animal. I'm like, dude, if I work out five times in one day, I'm, I'm done for the next day. <laughs> you know, like, he just recovers and – uh He's, he's, an not just one of those, he's not just an animal, like, oh, he's strong and he's athletic, but his technique on the ground, I mean, he's he's a brown belt tapping out black belts like nothing. His stand-up's phenomenal. He deadlifts like 600 pounds. I mean, he's he's really the definition of an animal. I mean, you know, and uh, I'm I'm just, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm happy to be a part of his little journey. I met Sean when he was 16, you know, and uh, – I've been kind of um, working out with him since he was around that age, and I always said, you know, he's going to be the next big thing. I told, I told everyone that. I said, look, I said, by the time he hits the CFFC scene, you know, he'll be the champ. And I said, and I think that within two, two years, three years after that, he'll be the UFC champion. So I don't want to, uh, you know, talk too much, but I think he's uh, he's ready for the next level for sure, man. So I'm excited to see him. I mean, I'll fight before him, so you know. I'll be I'll be right there with you. You'll, you'll have the pleasure of uh, of seeing it if you can get back out there in time. If it's not, uh, I mean, you got to remember yeah. the last time he was out there. I don't even think it was uh, I don't even think it was like eighty seconds, and he wants up hitting that kid with the spinning back wrist. Yeah, no. Like I said, he's so well rounded. It's just you never know what he's going to throw at you, whether it's a spinning back yeah. fist, a flying knee. I mean, but he that's takes the other thing he, about he, Sean that makes him really hard. He's strong. He's well rounded, and he's unpredictable. It's just it's, yep. it's, it's 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 crazy, and you know he used to just kind of be, um, you know he uh, he used to be a grappler in a sense of where he would just 
punch you once or twice, take you down, and finish you. And now he's, you know, his stand up's so good. He's, he's, you know, he's not even wrestling that much anymore. He's just, you know, knocking people out. So it's good for him. You know, he, he puts the time in, and uh, I don't see really, I don't see anyone really beating him right now. So. Awesome, awesome, Mike. As we uh, as we end the interview, you know how we always do this: th- throw the proverbial microphone over to you. Anyone you would like to thank, train the partners, teammates, uh, shoot out your social media sites, any sponsors you might have, websites, charities you're working with, anything of that nature. The time is yours. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, I, I pretty much just kept my uh, same sponsors from like two years ago. I, I just have everyone on the banner, you know. Uh, I didn't even uh, ask for really sponsors this fight again. I didn't even want to tell anyone I was fighting, to be honest with you. But unfortunately, I got to sell. Um, <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to go out there. I, I just wanted to go out there and fight. I wasn't even going to tell anyone. But uh, I want to thank, uh, you know, obviously Daniel Gracie uh, for kind of putting his foot up my ass and getting me back out there, you know, <laughs> and my teammates, Hensler Gracie Philly, um, you know, Bozy's Boxing Gym, UFC Jim Cherry Hill, my strength and conditioning coach, Howard Aaron. Um, so, yeah, just my friends, family, and, uh, you know, I guess that's about it, really. So. Awesome, Mike. You know, uh, I don't know if you're still using your Twitter, but you know, guys, he's uh, yeah. I, I think uh, I got, I'm horrible on social media, so I got to <laughs> probably react. That's not a bad yeah. thing, cowboy. That's not a bad thing. Yeah, uh, dude, so the, you save yourself from some of the idiots because, oh my God, the, the, they've gotten worse <laughs> over the last two years. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's just like I got I got Facebook and Instagram, and uh, I got Snapchat, but it's just like, man, like I don't I don't want another social media thing to be flipping on all the you know scrolling on all day. <laughs> You know, I, I feel your pain. I can't stand it. I'm, out, I'm staring at my phone all day, get like sucked in, and I'm like, Jesus, I, <laughs> you know, it's horrible. So there goes you your training time things. out the door. Yep, exactly. All right, guys, well, good luck with everything. All right, man. Hey, all uh, right, guys, good. all cowboy on Twitter at cowboy Wilcox 185 cowboy. Take it easy, my, man. Instagram Wilcox 185. I'll see you. See you. All right, guys. Bye. All right, Mike. Have a good one.